Fight Back with Libby Zneimer on Zoomer Radio. Welcome back. In the run-up to the municipal election, we'll be zeroing in on some of the more interesting races, especially those where incumbents are running against each other as a result of the reduction in the number of wards. Now, incumbents have a huge advantage because of name name recognition, but in this case, a man running against two incumbents, has some serious advantages of his own. George Smitherman was once the second most powerful man in the province. He represented this riding, Toronto Centre, provincially, when he served as the former health minister and deputy premier. He made a run for the mayor's job, but was defeated by Rob Ford. And now he is vying for a seat on council to represent Toronto Centre. He's running against incumbents Kristen Wong-Tam and Louisa Troisi, who was appointed to the job to finish the term of Pam McConnell, who uh, unfortunately passed away while still in office. George Smitherman, welcome. Thanks for being here. Great to see you. Why are you doing this? You know, I got started on this because Pam McConnell took me to lunch. She was unwell already and knew that she wouldn't be running again and said, George, uh, you need to finish the job in Regent Park that we started together, the Regent Park redevelopment. Of course, uh, 47 wards uh, then, expectation gave way to 25, and I uh, took a hard look at it and frankly decided to continue campaigning because I think the health and safety crisis is that, that is affecting the streets of broadly uh, Toronto Center is something that uh, I've got better solutions for and that these incumbents, I think, have failed those neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. Uh, What do you say? Yesterday we were talking to uh, Toronto Sun columnist Sue Ann Levy. She uh, she did not have very nice things to say about you. She basically is saying you're just trying to worm your way back into politics because you need a job, I guess. Well, you know, I think she's she's a person that uh, lives in the the moment of disparagement. Um, I have the same amount of respect for her that she's shown towards me and I remember her very well as a partisan conservative candidate in St. Paul's and I think the fact that I worked against her then has always been a grudge Uh, but uh, you know I'd be happy to talk to Sue Ann say hi to her pleasantly anytime I get a chance to see her. What do you say to people who um, don't like the idea of a professional politician? Well I'm not that person then they should really be disgusted by uh, by a careerist like say Kristen Wong Tam. I'm campaigning on a two-term limit pledge. Libby, I walked away. You, you've, you've twice referred to me as a man that was once the second. I walked away from that in search of trying to be the mayor of Toronto because I like the consensual model that is possible at the municipal level and is very impossible impossible at, at, at the provincial. So my name might have been familiar with politics, but if you look at my career, I've been building businesses and paying my own way, including for all of the last eight years. I don't need a job, but I think that I have the skill set to serve Toronto Centre in this very challenging time. Five focus priorities two-term limit. So I'm not your career politician, even if my name has been associated with politics for a long time. My, most, of my, uh, most of my income tax uh, statements have been uh, uh, based on my private earnings and creation of uh, quite a number of businesses and jobs. So what do you want to do if you're elected or try to do? Well, really, I want to finish the job in uh, Regent Park with the redevelopment and focus very, very heavily on Toronto community housing's poor performance to work on issues associated with the TTC, especially on the Sherburne Street corridor, which is in very, very uh, rough shape, to focus a lot of time and energy at this health and safety crisis that is deeply affecting uh, the downtown with a very particular focus on deeply affordable uh, housing. And I want to work on poverty through addressing social isolation for seniors and using food as a, uh, well, that, as, a, as, a as a point of objection. So five uh, key priorities and like a, uh, two term limits. That's a big issue for us here, social isolation for seniors. How many Huge. do you have living in your riding and and specifically what would you like to do about that well toronto center has the largest number of co-ops in all of canada the largest number of toronto community housing units in all of toronto a tremendous array of private rental housing 
and of course uh, many seniors who are aging in place in homes so Toronto Center is a place I really identify as having a lot of seniors but also a lot of seniors at risk of social isolation the resiliency of the same Jamestown neighborhood with those 18 or 20 really large buildings has brought into serious question by the fire at 650 the previous fire at 200 we don't even know where the vulnerable seniors are so my focus is use food as the means of addressing poverty and bringing people together to address so social how isolation. You, how do you specifically, what do you do? In Toronto Centre, there's already quite a bevy of food programs that are quite unequally distributed. In Regent Park, we've got a tremendous amount of activity, but in St. Jamestown, there's no physical facility. So I want to work to create capacity by sharing skill set uh, uh, across the array of community like a programs. Food, a food bank? Or? There are already aspects of food banks and food programs, and Regent Park, in the redeveloped sense, has had some physical space built in to support those programs. St. Jamestown, which was built in the 1960s largely, has no physical capacity to support that kind of program. And also, we've got the uh, Riverdale, uh, we've got the Riverdale Farm, which is looking to how it can actually transform itself to look at what modern agricultural looks like, rather than being kind of a reflection on uh, Little House on the Prairie. Okay, uh, what else? Do you, um uh, you have Louisa Troisi, who is the incumbent, uh, but she was appointed and uh, said she wasn't going to run again. You know, I really have a difficulty with her candidacy, candidacy. Certainly some people are supporting her, but when they're reminded that she made a very solemn pledge not to run if appointed, I think that shakes the foundation of trust. She wouldn't have been appointed as the councillor if she had been honest and say, it's my intention to run. She wouldn't have been appointed. That much is clear. So I, 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 I really do take issue with that. And I think personally, uh, Pam McConnell got very, very significant votes in that ward and ended up being, we ended up being represented by someone that on many points really didn't reflect Pam so well. So I think her public service should come to, uh, should come to an end and that uh, Miss Wong Tam uh, uh, should be or will be uh, the primary opponent. Okay, uh, we are going to be talking to Louise Latroisi uh, after a break, but just before we wrap up, uh, you think your main opponent is Kristen Wong Tam. She's considered very left wing. Uh, you're sounding pretty left wing here. So, uh, what's the point of difference? Well, I'm I'm a I'm a pr I think I'm broadly in the center. I'm a pragma pragmatic person. Two big points of difference. One is in approach and attitude. I'm pretty sure Mr. Tory is going to be reelected. She and Mr. Tory are at distinct odds. They really have a personal animus, which is unhelpful. So on the one hand, I want to go to City Hall and work with my mayor in defense of the city against the province, not arrive at City Hall with my backup. So that's point number one. I, I just think on, on deep affordability, if we want to address the health and safety crisis, which is very prevalent in Toronto Centre at the moment, uh, housing, deeply affordable housing, is one of the critical ingredients. Toronto Centre, because of all of the development, has spun off a couple of hundred million dollars that Miss Wong Tam has had discretion around, she's put far too little of it into deeply affordable housing. I'll make that a much stronger commitment. It's a necessary step to address the health and safety crisis that we're experiencing at the street level in Toronto Centre. Okay, George Smitherman, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, great to see you. Great to see you. Okay, we are going to bring in Louisa Troisi. Hello. Hi, Libby. It's Lucy Troisi. Sorry, Lucy. No um, worries. Uh, so, uh, I don't know if you were uh, listening to George Smitherman, one of your opponents, uh, and he basically said uh, you shouldn't be running because you gave a promise not to run when you were appointed to this job. Well, it was never a promise, Libby. Uh, I did have no, no intentions of running, uh, but when George Smitherman registered to run, my phone actually rang off the hook with people encouraging me to reconsider so I had to consider the idea for a long time, which is why I waited so long to actually register. Kristen Wong Tam also promised that she would only serve for two terms, so I took her at her word. She has always been honest with voters and me. But it's time for new blood, and neighborhood safety is a priority that voters want addressed in Toronto Centre. Okay, and uh, by that, are you referring to safe injection sites? You're not a fan of them. Well, um, no, actually, I support harm reduction initiatives. I sat on the Regent Park Community Health Board for well over a decade, so I do support harm reduction. What I've been asking for is a moratorium on our ward because we have 
the most injection sites in one neighborhood than any neighborhood in the entire world. Surely the opioid crisis isn't just at Sherburne and Dundas. Um, so I'm asking for a moratorium in our ward, and I'm also asking for wraparound services of addiction counseling and mental health supports in those facilities so everyone is safe in the neighborhood. But, um, you know, there's all sorts of other safety issues that have plagued our ward. Gun so, violence. Yes. You know, um, I've called for a gun amnesty program where I would introduce, um, you know, a million dollars to a gun amnesty program over the next four years so that we could get 10,000 registered guns off our street. The RCMP says there's 23,000 registered guns in Toronto uh, alone. Who knows how many that are unregistered, but a payback gun amnesty program works. It worked in, in 2000. And if we put a million dollars over four years, we could get 10,000 guns off our street. I, and of I, course, I want to for- get back to uh, the issue of uh, those injection sites and you want a moratorium. What are some of the things that have happened? Because I, I gather there have been problems resulting from these sites. Yes, and uh, my office has been inundated with complaints uh, in terms of what's been happening in their neighborhoods. So uh, there's all sorts of escalated violence, uh, inappropriate behavior. Uh, you know, can, can you be are, a little specific? Well, there, there's lots of fighting, this fighting, um, who've been victims uh, in a lot of this are the homeless. Uh, you know, the drug dealers have been robbing them and beating them up. Uh, seniors who live in Toronto housing buildings all around those neighborhoods, they're afraid to leave their streets. Parents can se- cannot send their children to school alone any anymore. People don't want to visit their friends uh, in some of those neighborhoods as a result of uh, just the escalation of violence. Uh, people defecating on people's properties. Uh, drug dealing, um, all sorts of crimes going on in several parts of the ward. Uh, George Smitherman, who was just here, mentioned some uh, programs he would like to see, specifically targeting seniors who are vulnerable. Do you have any plans like that? Well, my, my first priority is to get the neighborhood safe because we could have, my background is uh, a community organizer with Parks and Recreation. And I I worked in wards 27 and 28, which is now Toronto Centre, for 30 years of my career. And I've always said that if a neighbourhood isn't safe, it doesn't matter what kind of great programs and services you run in those facilities, people aren't going to go. So my priority is to ensure that people are safe, and then we could run programs and services uh, for seniors. There's lots of seniors in our ward, and they need lots of attention. And sometimes we may may have to provide services within their buildings uh, as a result of them being unsafe to leave their buildings. So I think I would bring a lot of programs, as I have done in the past, or actually brought programs and services directly uh, to their buildings um, for them to have. Okay, uh, hang on, Lucy. Uh, we are going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back with more. You're listening to an exclusive podcast of Fight Back on Zoomer Radio. Heard weekdays from noon to one. Fight Back with Libby Zneimer on Zoomer Radio. We have been talking about the hard-fought race for Toronto Centre, where in addition to two incumbents facing each other, we have a guy who was once the second most powerful man in the province, and that is George Smitherman. Uh, so right now we have incumbent Kristen Wong-Tam on the line. Hello. Hello. Kristen Wong-Tam, are you there? Okay, we are waiting to get Kristen Wong Tam. Uh, yes, I'm back on the line. Hello. Hello. How are you? Good. Very good. Sorry, it's the uh, the call had just dropped earlier. I apologize. Oh, okay, no worries. Uh, so we've been talking to your opponents, um, George Smitherman, 
Uh, he says he's the right person to go to City Hall to represent the riding, among other things. He says you don't get along with the mayor, John Tory. Uh, we had uh, Lucy Troisi, who was appointed and said she wouldn't run again, but she said you made a commitment to only stick around for two terms, and therefore you should not be running again. How do you respond to that? Well, I think it's important for us to focus on the issues. There's a many, many uh, major challenges uh, right now in the downtown core, I would respond to them specifically by saying um, one major disagreement I have with John Tory, our mayor, is around the Scarborough subway, uh, that $3.3 billion one-stop subway, uh, which I continue to uh, to object to, uh, is our major point of disagreement. I wouldn't say that we don't get along. Uh, I've invited John to a number of different events uh, that uh, the LGBT community has hosted, uh, he and I have appeared on numerous uh, occasions to work together at different issues. Uh, and I actually happen to be the chair of the city's Toronto Accessibility Advisory Committee, uh, which, of course, um, uh, was chosen by council and John supported that position and role. Um, so I wouldn't say that altogether. But uh, uh, clearly, we do have some political differences. Um, and with respect to um, to Councillor Choice's um, suggestion that uh, there was a promise made, I think that just to clarify, is that as a new councillor, a rookie councillor in 2012, I had suggested that perhaps we should have two terms. Um, but uh, clearly what I have seen is that it takes some time to get things done. And uh, at City Council, my first four years was, was fighting uh, Rob Ford and the budget cuts, uh, trying to protect city services. Uh, and there wasn't a lot of city building. And I think most people were able to sort of follow the trajectory uh, from that uh, vantage point. Uh, so really, I have uh, been able to try to get work done. Uh, but it has been somewhat difficult, especially since the first four years were the four years and, and we were kind of lost as a city. And now we have Doug Ford in the premier's chair. And I'm now more energized to do the same thing as to protect our city. What's your priority? You know, uh, we have uh, obviously a housing crisis in the city of Toronto. It's not something that was made overnight over the last term, uh, but rather it uh, has something to do with the fact that we've got speculative land transactions t- taking place all over the province. And it's not necessarily just a Toronto matter. It's right across the country. Uh, we have uh, had to deal with the Ontario Municipal Board, which, of course, uh, your readers, uh, your listeners will re- recognize as a provincial um, uh, board that overturned a lot of local planning decisions. Yeah, but they're, uh, almost, they're out of it now. Yes, but it took six years to dismantle the Ontario Municipal Board, and I'm proud to say that I led the charge at City Council. Um, then uh, many of the applications that you see under construction today, uh, six out of every 10 developments uh, was pretty much approved by the board. Um, so I'm, pl- I'm pleased to say that we were able to successfully dismantle the board, but I had to outlive two premiers and, uh, and work um, uh, to work with four municipal affairs and housing uh, ministers to be able to dismantle that board. And that board was only dismantled earlier this year. Uh, and- but we, eff- we, eff- we effectively did do it. I'm very proud of that accomplishment. Um, Lu- Lucy Troisi uh, wants a mat- moratorium on safe injection sites in your uh, riding, in your ward. What's your position on that? Well, I think it's important for us to, to take a look at the facts and the data. Uh, safe uh, supervised injection services and harm reduction services uh, do save lives. I think we're, uh, we can uh, certainly agree on, on certain matters is that the communities and neighborhoods that host these services must also be kept safe. So not only should we be concerned about keeping uh, users uh, safe so that they can get to the rehab programs and the detox and the services that they do need in order to uh, get healthy again, um, but we also need to make sure that the communities that these services are hosted in uh, are safe. In some cities, there are separation distances uh, between these uh, centers, uh, whether it's methadone or what have you, um, and I think that's something that we should be exploring. Uh, the concentration of them in the downtown east, I think, uh, is uh, probably um, something that uh, that Councillor Troisi is concerned about, and that we share that concern. But to have a blanket moratorium across Ward 27, 28, or perhaps the downtown area, I think we need to be able to make that decision based on uh, real data. And that data has to be provided by uh, Ministry of Health, um, which, of course, uh, provides all the uh, funding for these uh, services. Uh, the federal government sanctions these sites. And if the federal government uh, got together with the provincial government and the city, uh, uh, city of Toronto to determine what would be the appropriate location, I think that we would get a better outcome. And uh, what about a special service uh, to prevent social isolation among seniors in the ward? Uh, George Smithman had uh, an idea about that. What's your take? 
Well, the city of Toronto has been working on the stream, uh, senior strategy. We're now into the second version of it, 2.0. Uh, there is connections uh, through that strategy uh, about a 27-point high action impact action plan. Um, and it really goes as far as uh, building more food security, uh, making sure that seniors are not isolated, uh, building intergenerational programs, looking at specific senior design um, housing programs to keep them housed uh, as long as possible where they are, if they can live independently. It's about expanding uh, personal support worker programs and doing better integration around uh, health and mental health maintenance. Um, so those are some of the programs that are already uh, in place at the city and being funded and being expanded upon. And I think that we follow that that strategy. Um, and of course, uh, everything that George is talking about is already being is already taking place. Okay, so we have a minute left. Uh, why should people vote for you as opposed to him, assuming he's going to be your main challenger? Um, well, number one, I've never lost to a Ford. I never lost to, uh, never abandoned the city. I've always uh, been very um, urban centered. Uh, Toronto is where my heart lives. I've been proven uh, principal and truly progressive. And uh, currently the city councillor who actually represents half the community. So I'll be hitting the ground running. Uh, there is no learning curve and I've developed the trust and a proven track record. Okay. Kristen Wong, Tam, thank you very much for being with us. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. You're listening to an exclusive podcast of Fight Back on Zoomer Radio. Heard weekdays from noon to one. 